my next guest has uh, run uh, 10 marathons. She's run 10 marathons. She's climbed many of the world's highest mountains. She's trained for a dog sled. Uh, she's right now she's training to do a dog sled expedition to the North Pole. Oh. I know. <laughs> Thank you for the help. Luckily, there was a Canadian lady in the audience. <laughs> However, now she's done all of that, and she has multiple sclerosis. Please welcome the remarkable Wendy Booker, everybody. Wendy Booker. Wendy, welcome. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. And I, I threw that, these. Yeah, but you, you, you said you were nervous about talking right. to me, so you threw away the notes. No, but I threw them away anyway. It's really <laughs> all right. You mustn't be nervous. This is much easier than taking a dog sled to the North Pole. <laughs> all right. I think I've never taken a dog. Neither sled. have I. Now, now, why are you? Why do you do all of these things? Is it when you got diagnosed with MS? Was that your reaction? My to it? bucket list became very long. Really? Is, yeah. that, is that what it was? Yes, it was a reaction. To and it. are you? Uh, um, do you suffer from symptoms now? What are the, uh, I su slightly, yes, right. I do. I'm numb on my left side, from right. my toes to my rib cage, but I push beyond it. I take an injection every day to help right. me maintain my lifestyle and go on living, and keep raising the bar. Now, does that? Uh, it was a. Is that what doctors recommend if someone is if yes. someone gets a diagnosis of MS? The, the it's a psychological thing is very important as well. No, no, it's not. <laughs> yes and no. The mind plays a big part in how you do. I think. Right. No, the big recommendation is to get on a therapy right away. Right. And so I've used that as my mission to go around and educate people with MS, uh, motivate, educate, and challenge them. Right. And tell them to get on a therapy and go on living their life. And that's right. where the mental piece comes in. Yeah, but I mean, I, with the greatest respect, you're, it's a little bit extreme to say I'm going to climb all the high mountains and take. A dog sled to the North Pole. I mean, I, I, you know, that's a lot to do. Even with, <laughs> even without MS, that's you know, it's pushing I, the, pushing the it's envelope. Pushing, you know, it's become kind of like a drug. Every time I do another mountain or do something exciting, I want to think, oh, what can I do next? Really? How can I top it? Yeah. Do you, do you think? I just, um, I, I hope I don't offend you with this question or anyone else who suffers uh, from from uh, with, with MS. But do, do you think that the diagnosis clarified for you how you thought about life? Absolutely. It did? And I think that's with all people who receive a, a diagnosis of an, of an illness. It doesn't right. necessarily MS. Right. I do think it's life changing. And I think it's how you decide to go with it. My father always told me it's not uh, what happens to us in life, it's how we react to it. Right. And uh, I know what I do is extreme, but it is my reaction to it. And uh, you're training right now to uh, take a dog sled to the North Pole. I how do you train with that? You like take a dog sled to the end of the block and back? And just, like, <laughs> yes. like build up? Yeah. Okay. I, um, I I had never trained with dogs before. I right. went to Ely, Minnesota, actually north of Ely, right. to the border of Canada. Uh -oh. How do you drink out of that? <laughs> How do you drink out of that without? You drink no, no, no. I wanted to see no, you do it without spilling on yourself. That's oh, easy. Oh, pretty good. It's censored. censored. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I drew a penis there one night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not there, there now. now. You can't see it now. <laughs> no. No, they censored it because uh, it was a long story. Right. Anyway, um, they... But wait, while I'm asking you, yes. I, when I was training in, in Minnesota, I was with a, a gentleman from Great Britain, uh -huh. and all he kept telling me, he was freezing his bits off. Yes. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> These. No. Yes. These are, the, these are the bits that fell off the gentleman in Minnesota. Actually, they're not. They're not. They, these are these are kangaroo testicles. Uh, ah, no, we didn't have those. We just had no, dogs. No, there's not a lot of these in Minnesota. Um, no, Carrie Fisher was here, and uh, she'd just come back from Australia. She brought me some testicles, and then I thought if I drew a face on them, they'd be less. Oh. <laughs> All right, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You could. Do you want to take these to I'd the North Pole to. for luck? Oh, well, I might see him. Maybe I should show him what he froze off. Well, no, <laughs> there's no kangaroos at the North Pole. <laughs> But I will, uh, as a gesture of friendship and goodwill, uh, I will give you these testicles if you want to take them to the North Pole. Uh, when I get back, do I need to send them back to you? Yes, you have to bring them back with <laughs> evidence they've been to see Santa. Uh, <laughs> and how do I do that? Well, um, 
um, just uh, tie a ribbon on them or something. Uh, they, uh, do you want to take them? Absolutely. Did you, are you, do you believe in good luck? Absolutely. Here. You need all the luck you can get. Well, there's the there. This this, uh, I'll right. give you my, my kangaroo ball. <laughs> I don't, I don't think anyone has ever given these to me before. <laughs> anyway. Come on, you're amongst friends. <laughs> so, uh, when are you going then? When are you going? No, I, I guess I leave April 11. I fly from Boston to Oslo, and then from Oslo to an island called Longyearbyen in Norway, and then right. from there to a Russian outpost called Borneo on the ice. Wow. And that's where I'll meet the sled, the dogs, and a man with a big gun. Right. Well, you need the gun, polar bears, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because polar bears are, you, you got to be careful with them. They're <laughs> yes. very vicious. That's what I understand. Oh, no. They'll track, they're the only animal that will actually track humans. They'll, they'll, they'll follow you. Yeah, you're going to need Because <laughs> there have been accounts of people going to the Arctic and then on the flight home a few rows back there's a there's polar bear, you know. <laughs> reading a newspaper. Like, I so, uh, now, what, what else have you done in your quest for these uh, thrilling moments? You climbed uh, I, seven mountains? I did six, seven and a mountains? six and a half. Right. I had a little problem with Everest, twice. Why? What happened to uh, Everest? I'll tell you. It's big. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big mountain, yeah. Um, I got to the Lhotse face about 23,000 feet and uh, this past spring, last May, and I had trouble uh, what, with... What, 20,000 23,000. 23,000? Yeah, I still had six to go. So did I you use an oxygen? No, just starting. It was right where you start to go on oxygen, yes but I hadn't started to climb I, with it. You know when you fly an airplane yeah. above 12 and a half thousand feet, you have to use oxygen. <laughs> uh, well, I, oh, it's recommended yes. that you use oxygen. But so, uh, I mean, and I think it's 16 and a half, you've got to use it. Which, and you were at 23 and you're only starting and to base use it. camp Everest is like 17 and a half thousand. And we don't, use, we don't use oxygen there. Well, that's, that's you're going to be falling asleep. Don't you feel ill when you You feel ill. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hypoxic. Right. Definitely. It takes a while to get used to it. So I get, you know, I, I get like that on a <laughs> tall shoes. <laughs> I go to Denver, I'm out for a week. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you did all these mountains. Are you going to go back and have a crack at Everest again? Then? Don't tell my mother. I She's 90. She, yeah, she doesn't, yeah, she takes this hard, but I'd like to go back, yes. You want to go I'm back? I'm taking a little break. I found I went too quickly the second time. It's right. really intense. Yeah, it's Everest. It's Everest. Yeah, yeah. And so going in 09 and then again in 010 probably wasn't the wisest thing. No. So I thought I'll, I'll knock off the poles first, north and south, and then I'll... What does, your, uh, what does your doctor say about this? Is this wise? <laughs> which is which it? doctor? No. Well, the, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. that there's probably a bunch of them. Yeah, there. no, I have a neurologist in right. Boston. And um, at first he said, did I, was I, I started with the Boston Marathon and he asked if I was a runner and I said no. I took jazzercise and I thought I could run the marathon. <laughs> and um, so I did that one and I just completed my 10th in November. I did New York. And uh, he's kind of written me off. I just always have to get his permission for insurance purposes. But do you, do you, uh, do you ever experience fear or doubt about what you're doing when you're doing it? Yes. How, all do, the time. You, how do you get through it? Um, I, you, I have learned with climbing that you have to have confidence in yourself, who you're climbing with, and in your equipment. And once those three pieces are in place, then you can do it. Uh, yeah, but what if you, you know, what if you're halfway through a marathon? What you're halfway up a mountain, and suddenly you think, "I've got MS. I, I'm, I've got to go I'm afraid. Yeah. I, I've got to go home." I think that might have been what happened this year on Everest. Really? I had trouble with the MS, and a part of it is when is it the mind and when is it the body, and it's right. very hard to discern the two. Right. Um, because there's so many people involved, you're tied to another person. It right. would be uh, very foolish and irresponsible to go on. Right. So it, with that regard and in, in respect to the people I'm with, I owe it to say I'm packing it in. Right. So. And what about uh, personal moments of doubt when, you know, the, the everyone experiences, I yes. guess, uh, uh, you know, uh, four o'clock in the morning or whatever it is. What, how do you get through that? How do you deal with it? I put on my iPod. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What do you I listen really to do. in your iPod? I have a mixture of everything from Aerosmith, Coldplay, The Beatles. Uh, I was thinking you were going to say Bieber, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to go back to your roots as a deadhead, you know. So. You were a deadhead? Oh, well, no, a fringe one. <laughs> fringe head? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, I, I wish you luck going to the North Pole. I, I, please take my testicles I'll and, and bring them back. <laughs> You're lovely to me. Wendy Thank Bender, everybody. Over there.
is an extraordinary woman. She's the first person with multiple sclerosis to reach the North Pole, and uh, she took my balls with her. <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> All will become clear. Please welcome the remarkable Wendy Booker, everybody. Wendy Booker. Wendy, it's good to see you. You, you too. You look fantastic, i got to say. This, I, this trip to the North Pole seems to have done you the world of good. <laughs> really? It, was, it, it, was it fun? Yeah, fun is a hard word to say when you're working. It's a lot of work. It's much more physically demanding than I expected. Really? When I got there, it was minus 40. Yeah, that's um, bad. We had a warming trend of minus 25. There's a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did the balls get smaller when you were taking them there? <laughs> Oh, we need to talk about the balls. Yeah, where are they? Do oh, I'm going to... You, yes. you did bring them back. Oh, there oh, they are. There they oh, are. Oh, there they are. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> there they are. Return. <laughs> Look, they've still got their little happy face on them, and now they've got... <laughs> And now they've got a hat. Do you know how much pressure there is taking someone's balls to the North Pole? <laughs> is that code? No. 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 That, you put me under a lot of pressure, I realized. Well, it yeah. was a good luck charm. I mean, because yeah. when you were here before the expedition, I was like, oh, this is a dangerous thing. Yes. And I thought yep. maybe the kangaroo testicles would yeah, help you did. on your way. <laughs> and you took some photographs. A lot of photographs. Maybe yes. see them. doesn't look anything like the North Pole. What happened there? Uh, we went to the Virgin Islands after the North Pole to thaw out. Ah. <laughs> well, perfect <laughs> place to yeah. take the balls they, they in the Virgin went. Islands, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah. that, so um, they put on sunglasses and enjoyed the trip. No, I noticed anywhere I went, it was like, where are the balls? Where are the balls? I need to make sure they're safe. <laughs> now, you, now you know what it's like to be a guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got no sympathy from no, the guys on the trip. Did they, so did you have uh, dog teams? I had, well, there were two dog teams, 14 right. dogs. Uh, six, they, they would probably be quite interested. Yeah, they were very yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. tried that early on, and it was not good, so right. I knew that. <laughs> and then I kept them in my backpack, small backpack that I always had that has food, water, an extra layer of clothes and the and bits. Right, yes, right. The bits. And um, everywhere I went, it's like, okay, where are the bits? Because these sleds tip over, they crash into the ice. Did you, did you really? I mean, was it dangerous? Uh, yeah, it was. Really? I fell constantly. I've never fallen so much in my life. Really? Yeah. And I, did you have, were you symptomatic of the MS? When no, you, you, I never had time to think about it. Is you're moving, going. At the minute you stop, you get very, very cold. So the right. whole time it's moving. It's eight hours a day of pushing through. Wow. We laughed. It's like pushing a 400 pound sofa on the ice. <laughs> the, um, you're That's off a the, very heavy sofa. Very heavy. That's what <laughs> it, the, um, you're off the sled more than you're on. Really? Yeah, which was a remarkable thing. Just pu to pushing it along? Or running alongside. And you think you're doing great and you're going along on the ice, and all of a sudden there's snow that's up to your waist, and there's your first fall. Boom, out. Wow. Then the sled runs away, and that's a bad thing. Yeah, bad, that's bad not, thing. you need to have your sled. No, in case my you sled's. Find a little yes, hill. yes yeah. my sled skills. <laughs> my and sled the, so skills the dogs pull good. the sled and you push it? Yeah, or you jump on at the last minute, only for two seconds, just to guide it, and then you're off again. Then you get to these enormous pressure ridges, because it's moving all the time. So the ice? Yeah. Well, that sounds dangerous. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. And so it cra you can hear it crack, you can see it move, and the ice crashes together, and you have to get up and over it. But what happens is the ocean opens up constantly. You're going along, and all of a sudden, there it is. That would be terrifying. It's, it's very... It, you learn to live with it, but yeah, at first, it's pretty scary. Did you see any bears? Not a one. Oh, well, that's... No, that's good. No. no no, polar bears are very, very... They will stalk humans. I mean, they will follow them home on the airplane. That's what you told yeah, no. me. I did not have a one. I yeah, they're like... I maybe because I was... I was a few seats back with a newspaper. I was in business class. Maybe they oh, were in the back. No, no, no. They'd be in first. Oh, were they? <laughs> I, I, if I saw them, I didn't know I was looking at one because it's so much snow and ice that I think. Did you I get landed. white out? Did you? Can well, I... we wear goggles the whole time. Oh. You're totally covered because any exposed skin will freeze immediately. How do you? Um... Oh no! Don't ask that. Well, come on! I gotta <laughs> ask. I mean, is it? Is it so you very, guys do you have, have to... it a lot easier. What guys? Yes. Really? <laughs> oh, well, I, is there? A, do you have to put up a special tent when you need to? 
Well, no. Goodness you just me. say to everybody, turn around. And they do. I've been with enough guys climbing and exploring that they're pretty sensitive to, right. oh, we got a woman on the team, we're going to have to turn her back. Right. And so you just say, hey, everybody turn around. So it's when you're stopping. You can't. Uh, it wasn't so much about the modesty, it was more about cold. the coldness. It's, yeah, no, yeah. You're, you do fast. Yeah. <laughs> about, <laughs> about the third day, I was harnessing up the dogs, and I had a large dog named Tyson, and I was harnessing up another one, and I turned around, and Tyson lifted his leg on me oh. and peed on me from my hip to my foot. And I'm like, oh, no, I've got two more weeks to these clothes it froze the minute it hit my leg <laughs> really <laughs> that would well, that be quite dangerous then if you were well well the, yeah. it, the cold is the most difficult part of the whole while mountains you have the altitude on the pole you have the um, so uh, what, what's next then you've been to the north pole south pole south you're pole really you're yes, going to do it um in Good fact Lord. you, you want to take the test you're gonna have to go but well yeah, I, I, I have to uh, i have to take them to france oh why are they going to I'm not going to France with a naked ladies dance without my testicles. That would be crazy. Wait a minute. What naked ladies? There's a place in France, Wendy, where the naked ladies dance and me and the boys are going. Is that all you're going to show them? I'm going to be saying, hey, ladies. <laughs> I got my... <laughs> <laughs> They're right here. They've been to the North Pole. They have. <laughs> no, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I'll get his, their face drawn in, a little cheer. I'll take them to France. I'll put a little beret on they them. Where do you go to the South Pole? In December. Okay, I'll have them back. Buddy. All right, I need yeah. them back because they really did come in lucky. And as I said, it's a lot of responsibility to take your bits it, yeah. to the pole. <laughs> Big responsibility, yeah, but it, they've worked wonders. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the miracle. All right, Wendy, uh, we're out of time. All so right, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, let's see what we got for you. You could uh, uh, there's um, mouth organ or pose. That's a new ball. The, well, this is the new thing we're trying. It's touch my glittery ball. But, oh no, I've had the furry ones. I'm okay. I don't yeah. All right. <laughs> so what do you want to do then? Awkward pause or mouth organ? What was the other one? Mouth organ. Now what did you say before that? Awkward pause. Oh, let's do the awkward pause. Uh, I don't need your help. <laughs> <laughs> you think awkward pause? I can do my own awkward pauses. <laughs> I was doing one there. How did you know we hadn't even just started it anyway? <laughs> All right, awkward pause then? Yeah. All right, do you want awkward pause with any kind of undertone? We have awkward pause with sexual undertones. We have awkward pause, smell my finger. Or we have, <laughs> or we have awkward pause, uh, what's that noise? That, that's the new one I just invented. Made up just now? Yeah. Oh, then we better go with that one. What, what, awkward pause, what's what, that noise? Mm -hmm. All right then. <laughs> of men, nothing you can do could really impress me with that one. Well, then how is it going to be awkward? <laughs> um. Oh, this is quite awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, well done. <laughs> Wendy Booker, everybody. <laughs>
I think. I've never taken a dog. Neither have I. Now, why, are you, why do you do all of these things? Is it because, wait, when you got diagnosed with MS, was that your reaction My to it? bucket list became very long. Really? Is, yeah. that, is that what it was? Yes, it was a reaction and to it. And uh, um, do you suffer from symptoms now? What are the, uh, I su slightly, yes, right. I do. I'm numb on my left side, from right. my toes to my rib cage, but I push beyond it. I take an injection every day to help right. me maintain my lifestyle and go on living and keep raising the bar no does that uh, it was a is that what doctors recommend if someone is if yes. someone gets a diagnosis of ms the, the it's a psychological thing is very important as well no, no it's not <laughs> yes and no the mind plays a big part in how you do i think right no the big recommendation is to get on a therapy right away right and so i've used that as my mission to go around and educate people with ms uh motivate educate and challenge them right and tell them to get on a therapy and go on living their life and that's right. where the mental piece comes in yeah but i mean uh, with the greatest respect you're it's a little bit extreme to say I'm going to climb all the high mountains and take a dog sled to the North Pole. I mean, I, I, you know, that's a lot to do, even with, <laughs> even without MS. That's, you know, it's I, pushing the, pushing the it's envelope. Pushing, you know, it's become kind of like a drug. Every time I do another mountain or do something exciting, I want to think, oh, what can I do next? Really? How can I top it? Yeah. Do you, do you think? I just, um, I, I hope I don't offend you with this question or anyone else who suffers uh, from from uh, with, with MS. But do, do you think that the diagnosis clarity? for you how you thought about life? Absolutely. It did? And I think that's with all people who receive a, a diagnosis of an, of an illness. Doesn't right. necessarily MS. Right. I do think it's life changing. And I think it's how you decide to go with it. My father always told me it's not uh, what happens to us in life, it's how we react to it. Right. And uh, I know what I do is extreme. Yeah, yeah you're going to need it. Because <laughs> I've been accounts of people go to the Arctic and then on the flight home a few rows back there's a there's polar bear, you know. <laughs> Reading a newspaper. <laughs> like, I remember her. <laughs> So, uh, now, what, what else have you done in your quest for these uh, thrilling moments? You climbed all I, seven mountains? I did six, seven and mountains? six and a half. Right. I had a little problem with Everest, twice. Why? What happened to uh, Everest? I'll tell you. It's big. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big mountain, yeah. Um, I got to the Lhotse face about 23,000 feet and uh, this past spring, last May, and I had trouble uh, what, with... What, 20,000 feet? 23,000. 23,000? Yeah, I still had six to go. So Were I you using oxygen? No, just starting. It was right where you start to go on oxygen, yes but I hadn't started to climb I, with it. You know when you fly an airplane yeah. above 12,500 feet, you have to use oxygen. <laughs> uh, well, I, oh, it's recommended yes. that you use oxygen. But so, uh, I mean, and I think it's 16 and a half, you've got to use it. Which, and you were at 23 and you're only starting and to Base use Camp it. Everest is like 17 and a half thousand. And we don't, use, we don't use oxygen there. Well, that's, it's, you're going to be falling asleep. Don't you feel ill when you're You feel ill. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hypoxic. Right. Definitely. It takes a while to get used to it. So I get, you know, I, I get like that when I <laughs> tall shoes. <laughs> I go to Denver, I'm out for a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, so you did all these mountains. Are you gonna go back and have a crack at Everest again? Then? Don't tell my mother. I She's ninety. Your she, yeah, she doesn't now yeah, she takes this hard, but I'd like to go back, yes. You wanna go I'm back? I'm taking a little break. I found I went too quickly the second time. It's right. really intense. Yeah, it's Everest. It's Everest. Yeah, yeah. And so going in 09 and then again in 010 probably wasn't the wisest thing. No. So I thought I'll I'll knock off the poles first, north and south, and then I'll what does your uh, what does your doctor say about this? Is this wise? <laughs> which which is it? doctor? No. Well, the, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. that there's probably a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, no, I have a neurologist in right. Boston, and um, at first he said, "Did I was I?" I started with the Boston Marathon, and he asked if I was a runner, and I said, "No." I took jazzercise and I thought I could run the marathon. <laughs> and um, so I did that one and I just completed my 10th in November. I did New York. And uh, he's kind of written me off. I just always have to get his permission for insurance purposes. But do you, do you, uh, do you ever experience fear or doubt about what you're doing when you're doing it? Yes. I mean, how, all do the you, time. how do you get through it? Um, I, you, I have learned with climbing that you have to have confidence in yourself, who you're climbing with, and in your equipment. And once those three pieces are in place, then you can do it. Uh, yeah, but what if you, you know, what if you're halfway through a marathon? What you're halfway up a mountain, and suddenly you think, "I've got MS. I, I'm, I've I'm, go I'm afraid. Yeah. I, I've got to go home." I think that might have been what happened this year on Everest. Really? I had trouble with the MS, and a part of it is when is it the mind and when is it the body, and it's right. very hard to discern the two. Right. Um, because there's so many people involved, you're tied to another person. It would right. be a very foolish and irresponsible to go on. Right. So.
Welcome back, Wendy. It's good to see you. You, you too. You look fantastic, i got to say. This, uh, this trip to the North Pole seems to have done you the world of good. <laughs> really? It, was, it, it, was it fun? Yeah, fun is a hard word to say when you're working. It's a lot of work. It's much more physically demanding than I expected. Really? When I got there, it was minus 40. Yeah, that's um, bad. We had a warming trend of minus 25. There's a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did the balls get smaller when you were yeah. taking them there? <laughs> Oh, we need to talk about the balls. Yeah, where are they? Do oh, I don't do you, yes. you did bring them back. Oh, there oh, they are. Oh, there they oh, are. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> there they are. Return. <laughs> Look, they've still got their little happy face on them, and now they've got... <laughs> And now they've got a hat. Do you know how much pressure there is taking someone's balls to the North Pole? <laughs> is that code? No. no. Yeah, that way, you put me under a lot of pressure, I realized. Well, it yeah. was a good luck charm. I mean, because yeah. when you were here before the expedition, I was like, oh, this is a dangerous thing. Yeah. And I thought yep. maybe the kangaroo testicles would yeah, help you did. on your way. <laughs> and, and you took some photographs. A lot of photographs. Maybe see yes. them? It doesn't look anything like the North Pole. What happened there? Uh, we went to the Virgin Islands after the North Pole to thaw out. Oh. <laughs> well, perfect place to take the balls they, they the Virgin went. Islands, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah. that, so um, they put on sunglasses and enjoyed the trip. No, I noticed anywhere I went, it was like, where are the balls? Where are the balls? I need to make sure they're safe. <laughs> now, you, now you know what it's like to be a guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got no sympathy from no, the guys on the trip. Did they, so did you have uh, dog teams? I had, well, there were two dog teams, 14 right. dogs. Uh, six, they, they would probably be quite interested. Yeah, they were very yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. tried that early on, and it was not good, so right. I knew that. <laughs> and then I kept them in my backpack, small backpack that I always had that has food, water, an extra layer of clothes and the and bits, right, the right. bits. And um, everywhere I went, it's like, okay, where are the bits? Because these sleds tip over, they crash into the ice. Did you, did you really? Well, I mean, was it dangerous? Uh, yeah, it was. Really? I fell constantly. I've never fallen so much in my life. Really? Yeah. And I, did you have? Were you symptomatic of the MS? When no, you I never had time to think about it. Is you're moving, going. At the minute you stop, you get very, very cold. So the right. whole time it's moving. It's eight hours a day of pushing through. Wow. We laughed. It's like pushing a 400-pound sofa on the ice. <laughs> the um, you're That's off. That's a very heavy sofa. Very heavy. That's what <laughs> it, the, um, you're off the sled more than you're on. Jason lifted his leg on me oh. and peed on me from my hip to my foot. And I'm like, oh, no, I've got two more weeks to these clothes. It froze the minute it hit my leg. Really? <laughs> That, well, that would be quite dangerous then if you were, well... Well, the, yeah. it, the cold is the most difficult part of the whole. While well, mountains, you have the altitude. On the pole, you have the... Um, so, uh, what, what's next then? You've been to the North Pole, South Pole? South you're Pole, Really? You're yes. going to do it? Um, in fact... Lord. You, you want to take the test? You're going to have to go, but yeah, well, I, I, I have to. Well, uh, I have to take them to France. Oh. Why are they going to France? I'm not going to France with a naked ladies dance without my testicles. That would be crazy. Wait a minute. What naked ladies? <laughs> There's a place in France, Wendy, where the naked ladies dance and me and the boys are going. Is that all you're going to show them? I'm going to be saying, hey, ladies. <laughs> I got my... <laughs> <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> They've been to the North Pole. They have. <laughs> no, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I'll get his, their face drawn in, a little cheer. I'll take them to France. I'll put a little beret on they them. When are you going to the South Pole? In December. Okay, I'll have them back. All right, I need yeah. them back because they really did come in lucky. And as I said, it's a lot of responsibility to take your... Bits. Yeah. <laughs> Big responsibility. Yeah. But it, they've worked wonders. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the miracle. <laughs> All right, Wendy. Uh, we're out of time. All so right, uh, what right. do you want to do? Uh, let's see what we got for you. You could uh, uh, there's um, mouth organ or pose. That's a new ball. The, well, this is the new thing we're trying. It's touch my glittery ball. But, oh no, I've had the furry ones. I'm okay. I don't yeah, know. yeah. All right. <laughs> so what do you want to do then? Awkward pause or mouth organ? What was the other one? Mouth organ. No, what did you say before that? Awkward pause. Oh, let's do the awkward pause. Yeah, I don't need your help. <laughs> I can do my own awkward pauses. <laughs> I was doing one there. We were, how do you know we hadn't even just started it anyway? <laughs>
All right, awkward pause there? Yeah. All right, do you want awkward pause with any kind of undertone? We have awkward pause with sexual undertones. We have awkward pause, smell my finger. Or we have, <laughs> or we have awkward pause, uh, what's that noise? That, that's the new one I just invented. Made up just now? Yeah. Oh, then we better go with that one. What, what, awkward pause, what's, what's that noise? Mm -hmm. All right, then. Okay, <laughs> hey, I've, I've been with hundreds of men. Nothing you can do could really impress me with that one. Well, then how is it going to be awkward? <laughs> um, oh, this is quite awkward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good, well done. <laughs> Wendy Booker, everybody. Remember. <laughs>